watch this and uh, um, hopefully it's up good enough where everybody can hear and we'll be right back after this. Thank you, God, for trusting me to be his dad. Thank you, Lord, that when a door closes, you're still going to take care of me. And thank you for cheetahs and pickles and failings and mommies and daddy. Thank you, Father, <laughs> for always giving me perspective. I'm so sorry. Thank you, God, that you are the great physician of both my body and my soul. Father, thank you for knowing my family's needs even before I do. And for ladybugs and old people and Disney movies and Miss Walker and donuts. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I'm never alone. Thank you, God, for what I have. And also, I wouldn't mind an upgrade soon. Thank you, Father God, for love, joy, peace, and patience. Lord, especially patience. And thank you for Jesse, even though he's mean during recess. Help him find a good friend. That's what he needs. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for childlike faith. I don't know if that touched your heart as much as it touched mine. But this morning I want to bring you a message that's simply called Thanksgiving in all and through all. We recognize from the video that you just saw this morning that there's many different realities in life. As Crystal shared today, you know, I love just the reality that she shared today, Crystal, in saying, you know, when, that, when the report first came, the first thing that comes up is fear. Can we be honest and say that a lot of times it's hard to get out of our flesh? Yes. Sometimes the first thing that we hear is not the voice of the Spirit or the, the, the fruit of the Spirit rising up. Sometimes it's the voice of the enemy that likes to shout into our lives. But I want you to know something this morning. Greater is He that is in you than he that's in the world. I want you to know, as Paul spoke and said, know ye not that you are the temple of the living God, that God's Spirit dwells on the inside of you, that all things work together for good to those who are called by God. We love God. We're called according to His purpose. We recognize that God is taking these things and turning them around in our lives. And I want you to know that in all, even as we 
read that scripture and the, the one that we've uh, shared and that, that you've, uh, we've put up there. Looks like my thing is dead again today, guys. Um, if you could advance that for me one, uh, one click, please. 1 Thessalonians 5, starting 14 and 18. This is what we just saw on the, the screen. And I want to read this to you this morning. It says this. And this is, uh, this is Paul sharing with the Thessalonian church, kind of giving them a, an ending of his letter of his final remarks. This is what he says to the church. He says, encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Whew. You know, we could stop right there. Be patient with everyone. Lord Jesus, oh, we need the fruit of the Spirit for that. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what's good for each other and for everyone else. Then this is what was put on the screen, this final words. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Man, you get that in, in what he says just in that last part. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. I want to say that to you again one more time today to let that sink in. In everything that you walk through, rejoice always. Why? Not because, you know what, when that diagnosis comes in, your first step is not rejoicing. The first step is standing against the fear. But when you turn and you recognize what Crystal prayed today, you know what? He gives me beauty for ashes. There, there's a, a, a turning in, in my life. There, there's an oil of joy that comes for mourning and a, a garment of praise for a, a spirit of heaviness. And so, Father, when I go through these things, the first thing I want to thank you for is, God, I don't go through them alone. Come on, when you walk through that valley of the shadow of death, the reason you fear no evil is because that he is with me. See, you got to understand that in everything you walk through, the underlying thought has to be, my God is with me. I want to tell you something this morning. If God is with you, there is nothing that can stand against you. When God rises up on the inside of you, there's a strength that rises up. And you say, you know, oh, come on. It's not me going through this alone. But God, we're about ready to go through something here. you got to get it in your heart that your first cry has got to be, all right, spirit of the living God, we're about to walk through this. And you got to recognize it's not just by yourself, but you're going hand hand in hand with your God. When you recognize that, that you're not alone and that God's there, you know what? It changes your perspective. Come on, now you saw in the video the mom coming to the door with the groceries in her hand. And you saw her get squirted with that water from her little girl. And how many of you saw the look on her face when she turned around? <laughs> Mama didn't look happy at that moment, did she? How many of you expected it to have a different outcome than run? I, I mean, you know, I, if we had been in that situation, there may have been a different outcome. But for the sake of the video, she turned around, and smiled, and grabbed the hose. You know, when you're on camera and people in front of people, sometimes we make things look good. But when we recognize God gives me a different perspective, thanksgiving and gratitude will change my perspective. I want you to know something this morning. We don't, as Christians, we don't stick our heads in the sand and pretend that you're not going through anything. You, you, you don't say, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just always good with God. I'm always, you know what? Sometimes you need somebody to walk you through. Amen. Have you ever been in a time where it's been so heavy you could hardly even pray for yourself? Amen. And you needed a brother or sister that was there to stand with you, to pray with you. I love the fact that I have brothers that are around me that if something's going on, hey, I can call out. And, uh, you know, I was going through something last year and, and I'm laying in the hospital over there. First folks that showed up were the Grams. You know, they're coming in and, and standing and, and praying because you don't go through things alone. Let me just share a, a practical nugget for you. Can, can Get ready to receive something. You ready? When you go through a hard time, don't run from the church. Amen. Can, can, can I just say that one, one more time for you this morning? 
when you go, I, Pastor Francis recording this, so I'm saying it right to you now. It's a, when you go through a hard time, don't run from church. Don't run from God. Never run from the shepherd. When you're going through stuff, run to the shepherd. Hey. Listen, this is how the wolf picks off sheep. If, you, if you're out and you do a study of wolf and sheep, the, the, sheep does, or the wolf doesn't run right into the middle of the sheep and grab one. It runs towards the flock and waits for the one that's going to take off on their own. The one that separates from the flock is the one that gets devoured in real world sheepdom. Can I tell you something? It has a lot of analogies for the way we are. When the enemy runs at you, don't run from God. Press into God. Some folks will say, well, God, I can't believe this is happening to me. It's, if we're real, there's a lot of folks, a lot of us have questioned at different times. Anybody ever say, God, why? All right, good. That means you're in good company today. You're all, all, all the aim. Sometimes we think that that's a, you know, that's a sign of a lack of faith. i got news for you. The first moment that you get bad news, faith is not always the first thing that rises. Can we get, you all, all right, get real here for a second? See, but when the enemy speaks, I've got news for you. Faith has got to respond. The Spirit of God needs to, to respond. And when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, see, the Bible tells me that God's going to raise up a standard even a, a, against him. And I want you to know something, that some of you are going through things today, and God is raising up a standard on your behalf as we set our eyes on God and we turn our eyes off the things of the world and set them on God Things begin to change, not just on the outside, but mostly on the inside, because I begin to not rely on my own strength. But I recognize the brothers and sisters that are going to hold my arms up, and they're not going to let my arms fall. They're going to stand together, and I, there's a God that's never going to leave me. There's a God that's never going to forsake you. There's a God that's not going to turn tail and run and, and abandon you. Your God is always with you. Come on, I want to say that. Your, your God is always with you. Your God is always for you. God's not against you. He's for you. That's why he sent Jesus. We recognize that as, as God's Spirit watches over us and we've become new in Christ. You know what? Let, let, me, let me just kind of deal a death blow to, to a little bit of a, a thought from the enemy. The devil wants to tell you at times where you mess up, where you sin. Some people say, well, I fell short. Yeah, sometimes we fall short and sometimes we look at square in the eye and say, yep, that's what I want. And we dive right on in. I want you to understand something. God is not looking to strike you with a bolt of lightning every time you mess up. God's not going to let the uh, uh, roof of a church fall in because you walked in when you've had a bad week. The blood of Jesus covers it all. The blood of Jesus covers it all. So what we do is we run to the mercy of God. And we run uh, under that, that grace. And we say, Lord, we're not running away. I want to speak this in your life today. Don't run away. Run to your God. Okay, come on. Don't run away. Run to your God. So as you, you read that and, and allow that, my prayer is that it's going to take a, a, uh, just a root in your life today. Hit that next slide for me, guys, if, uh, if you would, please. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 tells us the same thing. Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to tell you something today. Thanksgiving will change your perspective. Thanksgiving, be, having that attitude of gratitude will absolutely change you. Let me talk about three things in the Word of God today. I want to share the, the first one with you from... Uh, uh, Psalms chapter 34, verse 1. If you guys can just follow me back there, please. Thanks so much. Um, sometimes we think, well, you know what? I can be thankful after the battle's over or after the trial is over. You know, when you listen to Crystal's testimony today, I can be thankful after the doctor gives me the report of no cancer. The question is, can we be thankful even in the circumstance where we don't know what the end is going to be? Let me tell you a little bit about David and, and this, uh, this story I'm going to share out of 
um, Psalm 34. Sometimes we just need to know what the, the backstory is. Remember David's kind of tumultuous uh, relationship with King Saul. He comes in and he's the champion. David comes in, he's the champion of Israel. He comes when Saul is being tormented by evil spirits and David plays the harp and the, the, the spirits have, have to leave Saul at that time. But Saul develops a jealousy towards David and begins to hunt him down to take his life, to kill David. And so the people that David has invested his life in suddenly have turned not only away from him, but have turned on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever walked through a time in your life where you felt like you've been hurt by folks who are closest to you? They've backstabbed you. They've spoken. They've pulled away. They've left you. David was in that place. Remember his brothers, when he came down to, to fight Goliath, his brothers already spoke against him, told him, you know, who, who do you think you are? Doesn't really have a, a, the relationship to go back to. So he poured himself into the kingdom, poured himself in, gave himself for Saul and for the kingdom. Suddenly, Saul's turned against him. And his best option in life is to run to his enemies. His family is so bad David's only option is to run to the Philistines. And when he goes over, he goes, first of all, to a place called Nob just to get refreshed. And, and Saul is after him so much. That, and the, this, play, this city is a place where just the, the priests are there. They're ministering before the Lord. David takes off out of there. He grabs one sword, the sword of Goliath that's still there. And he heads on out. Saul follows him and Saul gets there. And Saul is so enraged and wanting David so much that Saul kills all the priests. So, I mean, everybody is after David. David goes and he hides with the Philistines. And to be there so they won't kill him, he has to pretend like he's crazy. Literally insane. He has to fake insanity. And that's why you see this that's written at the beginning of Psalm 34. A psalm of David when he feigned madness before Abimelech who drove him away. So that's the backstory. Everybody's been out to kill David. His family's rejected him. The people that were closest to him want him dead. And now he's going, and the Bible says this, that to make himself look crazy, he literally he let his beard grow. He's claw, crawling, uh, clawing at the walls of the city gate, and he's, letting, he's, he's just letting slobber run down his beard, acting like he's a complete idiot and has lost his mind. Anybody ever accuse you of losing your mind? Well, see, you're just in good company. You let them know, hey, I'm just running with my, 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 my homeboy David over here. You know, that's, that's, that's where, they, you know, everybody spoke to him about that. So David is being pushed away now from the, the Philistines because they're after him. Everybody's against him. Almost everybody wants to kill him. And he is recorded as saying these words. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be upon my lips or in my mouth. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. David, how in the world could you begin to say these words when everybody and everything is against you? I want you to know that David was a man after God's own heart. He didn't wait for the end game to come up in the middle of it while every Everything was against him, and everybody was against him. He still chose to bless the Lord. He made a decision and said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I want that to get in your spirit today. I will bless the Lord at all times. Man, when things are tough on the job, when things look like they are going to hell in a handbasket in my family, I will bless the Lord at all times. Look at that. His praise will continually be upon my lips or, or be in my mouth. I want you to know something. There is a power that will transform your walk when you get it, when you understand that I'm called to bless the Lord. I'm called to be a minister of God. I'm called to give praise unto my God. Not my situation and my circumstance does not dictate my praise to God. 
Come on, I want to say that to you again this morning. My situation or circumstance does not dictate my praise to my God. Who you are in Christ determines your praise, determines your thanksgiving. Oh, when you start, you know, you sit around the, the table this, uh, this Thanksgiving and you talk about what you have to be thankful for. If the first thought enters your mind, you know what, I'm not sure I have anything to be thankful for this week. You begin to thank God that he's your God. Lord, I thank you that you love me. Even though I feel like I'm a time where everybody's turned against me, God, I choose to, to bless you today. And Lord, I thank you for your love. God, I thank you that you sent Jesus, that I was worth it to be with you. Lord, I thank you that you've saved me today. God, I thank you that you filled me with your Holy Spirit. See, you can, listen, you can praise yourself happy out of a bad situation. Praise will change your inside atmosphere of what's taking place. You begin to, to set your eyes on God. Go to the next one for me there, guys, if you would, please. From last week, we read this, and, and I brought this to you as we were touching on this, from Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Remember this, when we talked about Christians being unmovable, Daniel heard that anybody that was going to bow down and call on another god would be thrown and fed to the lions. In other words, nobody could pray except to the king. And what does Daniel do? Daniel remains the same. And he goes on and says, Now when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered into his house. Now in his roof chamber he had windows open towards Jerusalem, and he continued kneeling on his knees there three times a day, praying, and listen to this, giving thanks before his, God, before his God, just as he had previously done. you got to catch this. This man knew that doing this was going to end up with him being fed to lions. And he gave thanks. I don't know about you, but if I was praying and I knew that in the next 24 hours I was going to be taken down to the Baltimore Zoo and thrown into the lion's pit, my prayers might sound a little differently. They may be more of pleading and intercession. God, deliver me! Daniel puts himself right on the chopping block because he knows they're going to see him. He didn't hide in his room. The Bible says he opened his windows and still did as he did before. And he still gave thanks to his God. Remember this this morning. Daniel had been carried off as a captive. He was in a foreign land, taken against his will. He knew that he was about to be fed to lions, and he gave thanks before his God. I don't know about you, but that's challenging to me. The things that I go through seem to be light compared to what Daniel was walking through. But the Bible says that he continued to give thanks. Let me give you one more this morning. If you turn and if you have your, your Bibles, you can turn it and look at this with me. But from Psalm chapter 42, and we can put that up there on the screen also. I want you to know that Thanksgiving is a weapon against despair and depression. Listen to what the, the Word of God says, Psalm 42. I'm going to go back and, and read just a little bit in context today. Starting in verse 4, it says this. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with joy and thanksgiving among the festive throngs. So you're hearing this psalm from someone who's remembering when days used to be good. You ever look back and say, man, these were the good old days back there. I don't know about today. I don't know what we're going to do today. This is what, what's happening. Somebody is, you're hearing from the sons of Korah who is walking through a time of depression. I want you to understand something this morning. Do you know that the Bible speaks about depression and despair? Sometimes we think, well, we're a Christian. We're not supposed to experience those things. Can we just take the wrapper off some of this foolishness? The Bible deals with, do you know that God gave you your emotions? And there are times where there are flat out challenges to walk through seasons of life. Amen. In this moment, this brother is walking through a time of despair. Look, he goes on, he says this, and he just begins to talk to himself. So if you talk to yourself, you're in good company. 
Verse 5 says this. Why are you downcast? Or if your King James says, why so downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. Come on, you got to catch this this morning. There, there's the understanding of what's going on, but then there's the prescription of what's going to change things around. We sang the song this morning. We, we will remember. We will remember the works of your hands. Sometimes you remember what God has done, and you've got to stir yourself up. David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want to tell you, sometimes when you are walking through where the enemy wants to put you in chains of depression and despair, Sometimes you got to talk to your own self and remind yourself of who God is in your life and what he's done for you. We begin to say, just like the psalmist, come on now, soul, why are you so down? Why so depressed? Why so distraught? Don't you dare forget your God. Put your hope in your God today. Something's going to change. Come on, what are you doing being despair? Mm. Sometimes you got to look at yourself in the mirror and let yourself know what the Word of God declares. And I love what Crystal shared before. It's God's Word that chases out fear. When we begin to declare, it's what we're telling you this morning. Don't allow... Last week I told you don't allow the news to be your Bible. Don't allow your emotions to be your Bible either. Don't let your emotions set your life. Allow God's word to be the compass for your life where we set our eyes upon God and we say, Lord, because you are my God, you are the rock of my salvation, I shall not be moved. When you get that deep down in your soul, you know what? The winds can blow, the waves can pound on in, but you've built your house upon a rock and when, that, when they wait, come on in against you, you got to understand the house that God has built on the inside of you, it is going to withstand any storm. I want to tell you this morning, Christians are meant for the hard times because God lives in us. Mm. We don't back off. We don't run away. We stand and we say, you know what? In the midst of it, they may be throwing me to lions tomorrow, but today I'm going to give praise to my God. Everybody may be against me, but today, while I've got breath in me, I am going to bless my God. I make a decision today while I still have breath, yet will I praise my God. Come on, somebody, let's praise God this morning. Now, you got to understand something. The weapon of thanksgiving is so powerful that that's one of the ways that the early church exploded in numbers was thanksgiving. And you know, if you read church history, do you know when most people took notice of the Christian, the early Christians' thanksgiving? When Nero took them and began mass executions. You read in Hebrews chapter 11 of those that were delivered in miraculous ways. And then at the end of the chapter, it speaks very briefly about those who were not delivered, those who were sawn in two, those who were fed to lions. Now, I've shared this with some of you, but I, I know that we have a lot of new folks since I have shared this last time. Christian history says this. Let me give you just this for two minutes. When they fed the Jews to, and the early Christians to the lions, because it wasn't just Jews, it was Gentiles also. Most of the time, if it was a family, they used the children before the adults. And they would wrap the children in skins of animals that were already killed and place them in the arena, making the parents watch the animals devour their children in front of them before the parents were taken in and killed themselves. So what they did is they tortured them emotionally as well as killed them physically. And in the midst of that, Nero took them in all the way down this one highway. He, he crucified them on poles and lit them on fire where you could see the, the fires. And it was recorded that even as they burned, they sang praises to God. While they watched their children being devoured, they sang praises to God. When they went in and were taken before the lions, they 
sang and declared praises to God. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were brought before the fiery furnace, when the furnace was turned up seven times hotter, they spoke and said, be it known to you, O king. And they began to declare the, the, the delivering power of their God. And they said, our God can and will deliver us, but even if he does not, we're not going to bow before you. They recognized that they served and worshiped one true God and their knee was never going to bow to another God. And see, the church exploded in the early days because those who were watching, listen, you can listen to a preacher say anything. Paul can get up and he can talk for hours. Listen, you think my sermons are long? Paul spoke so long one time that a brother fell asleep and fell out the window. He died and Paul had to go resurrect him to life. And then he just kept on preaching. All night preaching services. And some folks would look at Paul and say, look, you've almost persuaded me to become a Christian. It's one thing about persuading when you're sitting just in front of folks, but it's something totally different when everything is against you, when your kids are being killed in front of you, when you're next in line to be thrown into the lion's den and you're still praising God at that time. Oh, see, something is different here. So, something's different. There, there's a testimony of their life that's speaking louder than any preacher's words will ever speak. It's a life that's totally committed to something beyond what they could understand. See, they understood preaching. There were orators who stood up and proclaimed all kinds of things. The, the Greeks were known for their philosophers who would stand up on various hills and they would give long speeches about all different things with astronomy and religions and all the rest of it. The Romans were familiar with this. But when they saw the Christians giving their life in praise to the God that no death could turn them off of it, no threat could knock them off their stand with God, nothing they could do could silence their praise. I want you to know that even as Jesus said, if these don't cry out, even the rocks will cry out because God is worthy of our praise. Woo! And the incredible thing that happened was the testimony of their lives and the young church spoke way beyond the length of their days. And I want to tell you that this morning. The testimony of your life will outlive the length of your days. I, I, I want to speak that into you today. The testimony of your life will outlive the length of your days. You've all been to funerals where folks have said, you know what, my mom wouldn't have wanted me to do this. And so at her funeral, I'm going to commit my life to live better. I'm going to commit my life to, to get off drugs and to be clean. Why? They recognize that there was a way that that person lived their life that was now going to influence the next generation for the way that they were going to conduct their lives. Folks, I want to tell you something this morning. I believe the same thing is true for you and for me, that we can live our lives in praise of God in such a way that the next generation will say their life speaks of something greater than what I know of. There's something about that life that I've got to find out about. Something about that life that I've got to emulate. Something about that life that I've got to take and I've got to allow that same God to change my life the way that he changed their life. Let your life be a testimony of praise a testimony of thanksgiving for God is worthy of our praise you know what I, I love it and I'm going to begin to to close on I had a whole bunch of other stuff I was going to give you today but uh, I want to share this with you this morning as we begin to to close the power of thanksgiving the power of of gratitude towards our God will break the hold of depression and despair. It'll break the shackles of the enemy. It'll take you from that place where you're, you're not sure what tomorrow holds and that place where you're, 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 you're about ready to give up on everything. And we set our eyes on Jesus and the chains begin to break. See, I hear some chains falling this morning. 
I hear some chains that are about to be loose today and broken off of our lives where we recognize, you know what, I may be going through some things, but I'm not the first person who's ever walked through something. Lord, I want to set my life as, as an example after those who've gone before me. Remember what the book of Hebrews tells us. It says that we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let's cast off every restraint that would hold us back and let's run the race. God has set a race before every single one of us today. He set a ministry in your life. And as Crystal said early, so eloquently, sometimes your misery can be your ministry. Sometimes your test becomes your testimony. I want to tell you something this morning. People ask me what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that God takes all things and works them for the good. That even what the devil meant for evil, God's going to take it and use it for the good. That he turns around. Can you imagine how frustrated the enemy must be every time he tries something in your life? When we submit to God, God turns it around and uses it for good. <laughs> Joseph was meant to be destroyed. Joseph was meant to be an outcast. He looks at his brother and says, what you meant for evil, God turned it and used it for good. There are men and women who will use things, evil things, against you, meaning to destroy you. Never let it rock your boat. Keep your eyes set on God because God will turn it around. He's going to use it for your good. He's going to use it for the kingdom of good. You're going to touch somebody else's life because you're going to learn in this world that life is not just about me. Life is about those that I get the privilege and honor to touch. God's going to bring divine appointments into your life. There's going to be those around you who need Jesus, who need the light of God. And we can choose to look at this world and the things that are a challenge to us, the things that are, are, are just feel like they've, they've got a grip on us. But we can choose to say, God, I trust you with those areas of my life. And I set my eyes on you. And God, today, I give you thanks. I want to be like Daniel, who sits and gives you thanks even before he gets thrown into a lion's den. I'm going to be like the psalmist who, who speaks to himself and says, Ah, uh -uh, soul, you're not going to stay distressed. Put your hope in God. And we begin to give praise unto our God. This morning I want to pray for you. And then after we close the service, many of our, our ministers will come up. If you're new with us, um, our ministers will come. And if you need somebody to pray with you individually, I invite you to come and, and receive ministry this morning in just a few moments. But I want to pray over you first. You've been sitting for a while. Would you stand with me over the sanctuary? Jesus. I believe that today that there are going to be those here that literally chains are going to fall off your life. Today. I believe God is calling you to choose Thanksgiving. Not to just celebrate Thanksgiving, but to choose thankfulness in your life. See, there's a difference between celebrating one day of year. You could sit and watch the parades, eat sweet potato pie, enjoy all the things of Thanksgiving, but you can walk away without a thankful heart and miss the blessings and freedom of God. Today, you say, Lord, I want to live a life of thanksgiving. I want to be a reflection of your praise, oh God, that others would see Jesus through my life. Would you just lift your hands with me to the air as if grabbing out to God this morning? And would you pray this with me this morning, just all over the sanctuary? Let's pray this together. Would you pray, Father in heaven, I am thankful for the gift of Jesus given to me and given for me today Lord God I return to you to give you praise in my circumstance 
through my circumstance, I set my eyes on the living God who loves me and has given himself just for me. Today, Lord Jesus, give to me a new heart, a right spirit, and a thankful heart. Today, I rejoice in you. I pray continually, and I give thanks to my God in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, would you shout to the Lord this morning and give him praise?